What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I, Graham Jason Matthews, break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the January 23rd, 2023 edition of Raw Talk, coming off the Raw 30 show last night, which overall I really enjoyed. I thought the first hour was honestly one of the best first hours in definitely recent Raw history, if not ever. All three segments, the Tribal Chief Court of uh, Sami Zayn, I thought was phenomenal. One of the best segments they've ever done on Raw. The LA Knight Bray Wyatt Taker segment was amazing as well. And I love the Raw Tag Team title match between the Judgment Day, the Uso slash Sami Zayn. So, getting right into Raw Talk here, they open up the show by recapping the closing segment that saw Brock Lesnar aid Austin Theory in defeating Bobby Lashley to retain the United States Championship. They go back to that a little bit later on. Uh, they replay the Tribal Court segment at the opening of the show. They kind of replay like a full two minutes of that segment, if not more than that. Rightfully so, too, because it was by far the best part of Raw and one of the best segments I've seen on Raw in forever. And Raw has had some great segments, of course, in the last couple of years, 10 years, whatever, but that segment all around was just fucking cinema, as people have said, just amazing stuff. Uh, Matt Cam says that Sami Zayn, he's in the Sami Zayn camp here, in saying that he has absolutely benefited every single member of the Bloodline, whether it be Roman or the Usos, even Solo Sokoa. He has benefited all of them, and he shouldn't even have to defend himself. They recap the six-man tag team match that saw Seth Rollins and the Street Profits knock off Imperium. Uh, they interview Kurt Angle backstage. Kurt tells Byron Saxton that he had a lot of fun on the show. It was cool to be a DX honorary member for the night. It's a night that he'll never forget. He'll remember it forever. And he said he's very proud to be a part of a lot of Raw's history in the last 30 years, or at least since he debuted back in 99. And he's also very grateful for WWE for signing him when they did back in 1999. Uh, coming back from commercial, we hear from the Prophets right away with Kathy Kelly. Montez and Angelo talk their big win on Raw, maybe getting back in a championship contention. I love the Prophets, but hopefully fucking not. Um, we have seen them in the Usos what feels like a million times. We do not need another round of those two teams right now, so no thanks. Um, they recap the, you know, they go out to celebrate, whatever. Back in the studio, they recap the Usos. Speaking of them, uh, Judgment Day Raw tag team title matchup. And the bond that Sammy and Jay have now, coming off the many times Sammy has helped Jay, and the, you know, the fact that he stepped up the plate here on Raw, filling in for Jimmy Uso, who seemingly got hurt, and uh, helping Jay retain the Raw tag team titles. I laugh because it was just such a great segment, they did such a great job with that, and exceptionally executing that and, and allowing Sammy to fill in for Jimmy. The whole thing was great. We saw it a couple of weeks ago with Dominic and Finn, so kind of rehashing that was a bit like, eh, I wouldn't do that again, but overall I thought it was great. Uh, they replay the Undertaker LA Knight Bray Wyatt segment, which as I mentioned earlier, I thought was phenomenal. Uh, a great way to kind of allow Taker to pass the torch to Wyatt, which should have happened, let's be honest, a decade ago, but better late than never, I guess. They replay what we were supposed to get of Becky Lynch versus Bailey in the Steel Cage match, which didn't actually happen. The balls here to recap and replay this entire angle, um, because the match was advertised, they did not deliver, and per Fightful Select, it was because the opening segment, with the Tribal Court segment, uh, ran too long. So they cut this match, it was either they make it a two-minute cage match, or they don't do it at all, they run an angle to set it up for another day. Now the problem... Um, I think, is that that makes sense. Although they had a lot of other crap on the show, they probably didn't need to. I enjoyed the poker segments and some of the other segments. Not that I am a master of television. I mean, you know, I've never been in television in the sense that I don't know how to map things out with, with timing and commercials and whatever. I feel like it would have made a little bit more sense, though, to cut the Bianca, Charlotte, Sonya Deville segment with Ric Flair um, I like Bianca. I like all those women. It was a complete waste of fucking time. The deville Belair match was a complete waste of time. Even if it was like a couple minutes, they really could have um, extended that out and given that time to the Steel Cage match, at least in my opinion. That was a good 10, 15-minute segment they could have easily given to those guys. That didn't make much sense to me at all. But, or given to those girls, rather, uh, to Becky and Bailey. Anyway, so backstage, Damage Control says that they don't have to listen to anyone. Uh, it doesn't matter what they were supposed to do, ha supposed to have a steel cage match. That was Becky's stipulation. Why do what she says they should do and compete in a cage match, whatever. Uh, Bailey says that she was simply smarter than Becky on this one night, and she left to celebrate. And, uh, and that was about it, that they were smarter than Becky, and uh, they kind of outsmarted her by attacking her and not having the actual match. They tried to explain why the match didn't happen. And credit to Matt Camp and Jackie Redman for, again, trying to 
make sense of it. Matt Cam says that Bailey was smart for not wanting to be in a cage match right before the Royal Rumble. Jackie agrees. The whole thing was fucking dumb. People were looking forward to that cage match, and they did not give it to us. So that's a bummer. But uh, hopefully we will get it soon. I'm sure we will either at Elimination Chamber, maybe even as recently or as uh, quickly as Raw next week. I guess we'll find out. They replayed the Austin Theory Bobby Lashley uh, finish here with Theory or recapping it rather Theory beating Lashley to retain the United States Championship as they mentioned earlier with help from Brock Lesnar. Uh, Matt Camp expects Bobby to be on a war path going forward in exacting revenge on Brock. This is now now this is now the second time that Brock has cost Bobby the United States Championship. The first time when he ended his reign back in October when he allowed Rollins to beat Bobby and attacking Bobby, and that was kind of Bobby's fault for going forward with the match, but whatever. And then again here. So, Bobby wants revenge. And then to close out the show, they run down the Rumble card for Saturday and also plug the Brawling Brutes, Roxanne Perez, and Raquel Rodriguez for the bump coming up this week. Uh, it's a pretty decent edition here of Raw Talk and recapping Raw 30, which again, as I said, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a great show uh, as we head into the Royal Rumble. They had the tough task of kind of celebrating Raw's 30-year history while also hyping and promoting the Royal Rumble for this coming weekend. Um, Definitely not an easy task, but I thought overall they did a decent job, and I am looking forward to the weekend. With all that being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out the show. The review here, I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. We'll be back soon with more videos here on the channel. Have an awesome one. I'm Graham G.S. and Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.